Hi folks, I'm Bill Griggs from the CNC Router Tips Podcast. Um, a few episodes ago, in episode 18, Eric Royer came on and he talked to um, us about uh, his adventure uh, starting a company called StepCraft.us. And uh, Eric is bringing in ger a, a German-made um, CNC uh, router package that um, I'm looking forward to, to looking at. And this is, um, yeah, I received one in the mail from him and we're putting it together so, you know, you know that this was provided to me for the sole purpose of me taking a look at it and seeing what I thought about it. I'm not um, uh, in any way obligated to sugarcoat anything or um, anything. I'm going to give you the straight scoop on what I think of this machine uh, from my perspective as a guy who's built several CNC machines. I, I think I've built uh, 11 machines so far or had part in building 11 different CNC router tables. So this is my first look at a commercially available kit and you know come along uh, in this series and we're going to put it together, see what it does. Today I got a nice little surprise from the UPS guy uh, dropped off at my doorstep. Uh, Eric Royer appeared on episode 18 of the CNC Router Tips podcast. And this is uh, the machine that um, he talked about uh, on that episode. So uh, we're going to unbox it for you and show you what's inside. This is the uh, middle size model of uh, the Stepcraft line. Uh, Stepcraft has a Stepcraft 300, a 420, a 600, and an 840. And this is the Stepcraft 2 600. And it's going to include UC CNC control software as well. So let's see, see what's in the box. Okay, this all comes in a uh, fairly large box. As you can see it takes up most of the dining room table with the box itself is um, a little over 30 and a half inches long by 21 and a half inches wide. So it's a pretty good size. They use quite a bit of tape on this so uh, you know the box did pretty well in shipping. There's only one um, one ding on it and uh, you can see that right down here. So hopefully, um, hopefully nothing was damaged in there. Although if it is, we'll know that's why. Um, it looks like the UPS guy underestimated the weight of this thing. It's about um, 49 pounds, according to the uh, shipping label. And we'll get our first look inside the box. Okay, looking in the box, first thing I come to is a packing list. And it lists all the things that are supposed to be in here, a machine table, a, a, a unit control plate, uh, bottom plate. Uh, oh, I like that. It, it, it tells you to watch out that there's a risk of cutting with the bottom plate. It must have uh, uh, edges that uh, you know, you'd have to be careful with. So uh, that's good to know. Um, you know, and there's a few more things on here, uh, the rear panels, the front panels, the gantry uprights, tool holders, motor holders, etc. So it's an, a complete list of all the parts that are in this. And you can go down, uh, they've used a checkbox to, to uh, indicate, you know, that all these parts are in here. But you could also go down and put a check mark next to each one as you take them out. So you know you've got all the parts. It says first steps. And it says to read this before you use it. And it's some stuff about uh, setting up UCCNC software. And a few other things about clamping and um, attaching your uh, spindle. So we'll, we'll give that some consideration. And there's operating instruction manual.
lot of text. These are on glossy paper. Uh, they're the kind of thing you'd want to uh, keep in a notebook after you're done. So you might want to take a three-hole punch and punch some holes in them, and you could keep it all in a ring binder so you could uh, find it easily. And lastly are the assembly manual. But it shows each of the pieces of the assembly um, in 3D drawings with a part number and how many there are. So for instance on this page in this piece it's a brass lead screw nut it tells you that there's four of them in there. So just looking through the book, it, you know, it looks like there's a, a lot of uh, sub-assemblies to do, which you would expect in a CNC machine. Um, wow, these drawings are excellent. Tell a lot of work went into these. So this will this will be the twelfth machine that I built, even dozen. Um, huh. Yeah, this is this looks to be um, well thought out, pretty well executed. That's just at first blush. Now I'm not gonna. Um, Say that this is perfect, but uh, it doesn't look like the average person who knows how to turn a screwdriver would have a problem with this. So that's good. It's one of these sub assemblies it comes individually bubble wrapped. There's uh, foam blocks to hold them apart. Uh, I'm not sure once I take these out with we'll lover get them back in, but. Uh, that's got to happen because it's going to be a couple of days before I can get to, to uh, doing the rest of the assembly. But here are a couple of the aluminum extrusions, um, side plates it looks like for, uh, for the main rails. Um, pretty hefty. I'm going to do want to show you. Many of the machines that are out there right now, and there are a variety of machines in this size range use um, V bearings and you know similar bearings for the rolling surfaces. This is the only machine I know of in this class that uses a brass roller. Most of the others are Delrin or uh, or aluminum. There are very few actual metal bearings. And that is a brass bearing with a uh, brass wheel with the, the bearings pressed in already for you. I have trouble believing that they're able to get all this brass. Brass is pretty expensive. All these brass parts in this kit. There's, you know, bags full of very well machined brass parts. It's probably a standoff or something. I'm just guessing. I haven't looked at the instruction sheet very well, but you know, uh, chamfered edges, countersunk, um, machined, threaded, rounded edges. Aside from the brass parts, there's also a bag of steel parts, and these are um, timing pulleys and screws and nuts, uh, bolts. The stepper motors, these are NEMA 17. Um, I don't know how many ounce inches of torque they have. I'll look that up and see if I can find that out, or, or maybe ask uh, Eric. Uh, to provide that information. Um, 
As far as NEMA 17s go, this is in the larger size range for them. Uh, some of them are, are you know, half, half the uh, thickness of this one. Um, and generally the amount of torque goes up with the size. Like I said, I'm trying not to take everything out of the box right now because I have to put this back um, on my shelf for a few days. But I just wanted to get in here and take a peek at some of the things. Um, okay, I think that's aluminum. Uh, if it's aluminum, then it's about a, a quarter inch, maybe three... Maybe five sixteenths inch thick. Uh, well, if it's German, it's probably five millimeter thick uh, powder coated, but very beefy. There's conduit for um, wires, um, limits, uh, limit switches in here, and uh, emergency stop buttons. This is probably the wiring kit for. For all of that. And it looks like things are separated out into sub-assemblies. So, you know, it would be nice to know if, if you grab a bag whether everything for that sub-assembly is in that one bag. That would be really nice. Uh, but I'm just guessing. Oh boy. Okay. Well, this explains why the box is so heavy. This is one of the aluminum extrusions and it is at least a quarter inch thick um, and the thinnest part. It is a very heavy duty thing. I think this is for the uh, uh, x-axis gantry. Okay, this is the only piece I'm going to open up at this time. Uh, later on when I get further down the line I'm going to take it all out and you'll be able to see that and that'll be in another video. Um, Okay, and like I said, I think, and I'm just going by what I've seen in the pictures, that this is the extrusion for the X-axis gantry. You can see that's pretty thick. Um, At the thickest point, it's a half an inch, and at the thinnest points, it's a quarter inch. So it's pretty substantial. If I had to guess, I'd say this, I thought initially it was about 10 pounds, but it's probably closer to three or four. Because um, I figure the whole package is 50 pounds. So. Having that one piece be 10 pounds it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. But somewhere around 3 to 5 pounds. Okay, and those are another part. I'm not really going to look and see what that is. But some other parts that are in here. These are the side rip. These are the side rails. There's two of them in here, and they're not quite as thick as the uh, let's see. Zoom in. They're not quite as thick as the um, X rail, but they're pretty hefty. Uh, use two hands when you lift this out of the um, out of the box. You can do it with one, but if you're not ready, okay. Other stuff that's down here. There's a USB cable, um, some more parts. This is the uh, this is the um, USB interface for the. Uh, 
for the CNC controller, it'll convert from USB to serial to go into the input on the back of the computer. Um, it's also a motion controller. There's an article on my uh, blog, um, themakersguide.com, where it talks about motion controllers and what they do. Um, and, you know, rather than bore you in this on that, you can go and check that out at uh, www.themakersguide.com. T H E M A K E R S G U I D E dot com. And uh, just search for motion control and you'll find that. Some more wiring. <laughs> Their own grease for the um, for all the uh, surfaces. Power wire. More stepper motors. Not sure what that is, but it's a pretty hefty piece of aluminum. This is the mount for the spindle. Um, goes on the bottom of the um, Z axis and is attached to the X axis. Looks to be about a half inch thick or more. three-quarter okay three-quarter inch aluminum powder coated put your spindle in there some more wiring um, the UC CNC software and these look like the control boards Oh, that's not wiring. Who's that? Some form of gasket. Okay, this is um, the controller and it's in an anti-static bag. I'm going to leave that alone. There's, uh, beneath the entire box is a board and that looks like the spoil board. There's some also some bent sheet metal pieces that are on the sides that I can't get to easily. But uh, we'll do all that on the next video. We'll give you something to look forward to. So far I'm very excited about uh, about this. This looks like um, A much more substantial build than uh, than I thought it would be. Okay, so there you have it—a partial unboxing of the Stepcraft 2 600 uh, CNC router table. Um, as soon as I get a chance, I will go through uh, and take a more detailed view of what's inside this box. I suspect that it's kind of build that you take things out as you need them um, to avoid, um, you know, losing parts or you're getting confused. There's one box that I didn't get to while we're in there. And I'll just try and sneak this out here because I'm not sure what this is. I'll open it up and see. Okay, so this is 
this is the power supply for the unit. So it's a, it's a brick style power supply, pretty good, um, with cables and everything. So really, it looks like everything that we needed is in this box. So. Looking forward to seeing what else it is that I might have missed in there. Uh, and these look like some label, laser cut or uh, drag knife cut. Not really sure. Well, there's burnt burnt edges. So they're laser cut um, things that uh, for like the panels for the DB9 connectors and everything, so that everything looks nice. And some Stepcraft uh, stickers in there. So uh, just. You know, every time I look at the box, there's there's more stuff in there. So anyway, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, look forward to you know you following along as uh, I assemble this. Uh, this is my uh, uh, first kit built uh, CNC router. I've always built my own from scratch, so this this will be a nice change to see you know what a commercially available machine. Uh, is like so I'm looking forward to that I hope you are too um, if this video was helpful to you please um, leave a comment below or uh, give us a thumbs up on, on YouTube or uh, you know like us on Facebook um, if you want to hear more of this sort of thing uh, you can check out the CNC router tips podcast at CNC routertips.com and that'll you know there's lots of uh, episodes there that talk about all sorts of things on using CNC's how to work the software how to build the machines um, you know the business aspects of it so if that's something that you're interested in check us out I'm Bill Briggs for CNC Router Tips thanks a lot have a good day